to before the fight. Big weekend of fights, the Ace Boxing Promotions. We're going to wrap that. We've also got the Olympic team on this week for the special that we did with them. But before we get started, my host, as always, Shannon O'Connell, Joel Camilleri. Shotgun, how are you? I'm great. Excited to um, hear about the weekend. It was great. <laughs> Kama, how are you feeling? I'm feeling good, man. Good as new. Good as new? Oh, well, I've never been good as new, but I'm good as I've always been. <laughs> <laughs> well, let's get right into it. So Ace Boxing Promotions had their fight night at Mansfield Tavern on May 15th, uh, with the headline being Dempsey McKean and Kiki Latelli. The heavyweights went at it. But before we start with them, let's break down the rest of the card. So we start the fight night off with notable mentions of Tyson Best against Raymond Ingram. The fight finished with a thumb in the eye, according to Ingram's camp. But good to see the you know, former Australian welterweight back in there, mixing it up. He's still top eight. So how good is it to have the welterweight division so stacked shotgun? Yeah, awesome. Um, hopefully he can stay busy now, um, get another fight so that that ring rust doesn't come back. Kama. It's an interesting welterweight division. There's a lot of fighters in there and they've all kind of moved around with each other. Does Best still have it to make a difference? Well, I remember when um, Tyson Best was fighting Nathan Weber and they were the talk of the town in the welterweight division. Um, and now he's, you know, he's back. He's had a fight for Ingram, but you don't know. He's got to obviously step up and get a win. His last time he stepped up against Ben Kite, he obviously he suffered a defeat. So now it's about getting another fight like that, like a Ben Kite or somebody at that calibre, and he's proving himself. Now, the ladies, Beck Hawker, Amanda Klein for the vacant Australian featherweight title. What an amazing first two rounds from Beck. Thought she was going to stop Amanda Klein in, that, in, in the first two rounds. Klein fighting back, a great performance from both girls. Yeah, um, awesome to see Beck win. Um, you know, like she works so hard. I, I didn't have anything to do with this camp, but the camp before that, um, we were sparring weekly and, and she works so hard. She's so passionate and... and she wanted it really, like a lot. So much emotion. She ran across the ring and, and grabbed Frankie <laughs> and hugged her over the ropes. I've seen that, huh? Yeah, how yeah. good was that, Cammer? Even, um, obviously I was fighting the next fight, so I didn't get to watch it. Uh, but I watched the, like, um, the last bit on, on Instagram. I've seen how like she, she's jumped over and Frankie's caught her like, yeah, it's like Titanic didn't catch moment, that's <laughs> crazy. <laughs> now, Shotgun, we expected there to be a level change, but did you expect it to be that much? Yeah, I did, to be honest. Um, like, Beck's just got that much passion of learning and bettering herself that she just, she would have turned that into like an obsession every, every time she stepped into the gym. Um, she was so keen to step things up and, and get that win and, and to have the win by TKO, then like, you know, that's, it would have just been so, so good for her. And great to have another great ambassador in the female divisions. Absolutely, and I have no doubt that she's gonna just keep stepping it up. Amanda Klein showing some really good heart and some strength and shows that she deserves to be in that ring and in that division. A bit of extra work with her and uh, Craig Monagle from Trading Blows and we could see some good things out of her too. From there we go to Kama, the Australasian title, super welterweight, your fight against Luke Woods, a great little stoush, hard to get off the mark, bit of a messy fight but you got the W. Yeah, uh, we always knew Luke Woods was going to be a difficult fight. To be honest, it wasn't my best performance but he probably made it more awkward for me than, and that's why it was hard for me to get off. That being said, Shotgun, yeah. Joel won the majority of the convincing rounds. There were a couple of rounds, obviously, that Luke did win. Yeah. But for mine, you still won the rounds fairly convincingly. It wasn't the most prettiest fight. But people have got to remember that that Luke Woods wasn't the same Luke Woods that fought Andrew Hunt. He went back, re-evaluated, went to the drawing board, and came back a better fighter. He said he would, and he did. There was a bit of controversy on the internet. You want to talk on that? Um, I, it was just the, the fact that Luke Woods had his arms up for the decision. So everyone was like, well, hang on, was it, was it close? Um, but yeah, I'm like to go back to the, it wasn't a pretty fight. I'm not sure if anyone saw the weigh-in photos, but mm. it was never going to be a pretty fight. Yeah, I know. Holy <laughs> shit. Oh, Holy shit. <laughs> Holy shit. <laughs> He's just a genuinely a nice yeah. guy, and yeah, I think he, he was very happy with himself yeah. and the fact that he got to fight and the fact that the weather's a little bit warmer up here than it is in Tassie. Him and his, <laughs> him and his partner uh, mentioned it multiple times how good the weather is up here and that they'd love to fight up here again. Yeah, no, it was a pleasure sharing the ring with him and um, all the best to him in the future. Now you've got a strap here on Australasia title. Before we get into that too much, Patrick Cusick had this to say about it. Yeah, well, uh, you know, it's been around now for two years. Now, the reason it's come in is because we want a pathway for the Australian fighters to get into the top ranks of the WBC. Uh, because, you know, Australia's been out on a limb. 
It's really part of Asia, you know, geographically, but it's had a bit of trouble, you know, it gets past, gets into the Australian Championships and then they need to go to the next stage. They need a belt to be able to take with them. And so the Australasia, which is like Australian Asia, gives them a chance between Australians fighting Australians and Australians fighting Asians to get into the top ranking of the WBC. So yeah, there you go. The, the Australasia title, the WBC, only two years old, but some great names have held that title and it leads Australian fighters to bigger fights overseas. <laughs> Dempsey McKean and Kiki Latelli. The heavyweight fight, a little bit of controversy there. Django has come out in social media, said, with all respect to uh, Dempsey, he thought Kiki won the fight. I've received messages from other people saying, I personally thought Dempsey did enough to win the fight. I thought that uh, the fourth round was close. It was a tough round for Dempsey. He did get cut. And there were a couple of big punches thrown from Kiki Latelli. But there were more than a handful of punches thrown in a round. And the rest of those punches were thrown by Dempsey, and they were a lot cleaner. I thought he was the better boxer on the night. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I'd love to. I'd love to watch the fight back. Um, one thing I, I just want to mention that that Django did say is that no disrespect to Dempsey, he doesn't make the decisions. That's something that I think that people need to understand. Mm. Like when there's a when there's a tough decision or a close decision, um, people attack the fighter. The mm. fighter's not a judge. No. The fighter fights. I thought, judges it was, judge. I thought it was really well said by Django. Yeah. And I think because he's such a prominent name in the heavyweight division, I hope he doesn't mind that we've mentioned it on the show. I'm sure he won't. He put it on social media, so yeah. I'm pretty sure he doesn't mind. I don't think he <laughs> minds, yeah. So it was great to hear that point of, from the big us, you know. There are moments in rounds, but the, the round goes for three minutes. You throw a combination, you've landed two combinations, say. That goes for how many seconds? Ten. Mm. All right, there's... Well, I don't know, my hands are a bit faster than that. <laughs> yeah, well, <laughs> Shannon, five. But yeah, I'm just saying, like, three-minute round, it's, that's ten seconds of three minutes. If the other person's winning the majority of the rest of the round, then they've won the round. That, I think, at times you can. You can be losing a round and steal a round with a punch. It can be one punch. No, I, yeah, but I said at the end like that, if the other person's winning the majority of the rest of the, the round, I said that. Yeah. yeah. But yeah, but you if, can if win But if you're it, winning, yeah. a, like, like, it just yeah. depends how a judge is, a judge is judging. Like... Like someone could be landing more nothing punches and then you land a big right hand, you've won the round. Yeah, yeah. You just stole the round yeah. with one punch. And, and you can steal the round with You might have, you might have wore 20 yeah. jabs or 20 pitter patter punches, but yeah. you can steal a round with a big shot. Yeah, no, you can 100% in, in a close round. And that's how it goes. But all in all, what an amazing night at Mansfield Tavern. It's an old saying, we hadn't been there for a few years. Well done to Ace Boxing Promotions. The event was sold out weeks in advance. From all the photos, it looked amazing because most of the time, everybody was standing in all the sections because the fights were great, great fights. A couple of other notable mentions there. Nathan Watson getting a good win. Like you said, Abdul getting a win as well. Yeah. And David Chan also getting up on the night from Nitro Box. Uh, got a great little attitude about boxing coming across as a convert as well. And look, we're hopefully we're only going to see good things coming out of him as well. So we had the honour and the pleasure of catching up with the Australian Olympic boxing team just before they fly out to Tokyo. Uh, it was an absolute honour and a pleasure. We got to see how they live and we went to J-Tube's gym at the PCYC at the Gold Coast just to watch them train. Happy guys, coming in. I'm Harry Garside, I'm their 63 representative for the Tokyo Olympics, and this is our room here in the Gold Coast. This is my, my team, Matt Alex, uh, 52 kilo. How do you like staying here, Alex? I don't know if I'd live with another three men after this day. That. <laughs> this is Kira. Kira is, how old are you, 22? 23. 23, yeah. Look how big his shoulders is. Face the camera, have a look. Massive shoulders. And this is Charlie. Charlie's English, very good looking human. Uh, 57 kilos. Yeah, boy. I'll take you on a little guided tour of our room. So this is where all the cooking's done, obviously. Us boys are pretty useless at cooking, but we try our best. This is Alex's room, double bed for a small man. And then this is where the two WA boys, Kira and Charlie, are staying. The beds are pushed together, I don't know why, but... Um, so this is, the, uh, this is the palace. I put a lot of work and effort into it. Currently doing some uh, some fight research at the moment. Olympic gold medal, what we're all working for. Got a real one. Well, it's from eBay, obviously. It's not a real one, but I'm um, pretty happy with the quality. This is the uh, Tokyo jacket, which all the uh, the Olympic team received last week at the uh, announcement. So it's pretty special. Um, I don't want to wear it too much. I don't want to ruin it. So I'm just uh, got it nicely uh, stacked up there. But 
Um, it's nice to receive our first um, piece of Olympic gear. Are you used to this many cameras in the bedroom? Nah, <laughs> <laughs> look at a porn star. <laughs> Hi, I'm Alex Winwood, a uh, 52 kilo boxer from West Australia, fighting for Australia at the Tokyo Olympics. I guess we're going to go in my room, it's very basic, because I don't spend much time in there at all. My double bed, the robe that we got when we got in, um, our official announcement last week. Uh, very proud of that. we also got the ticket here, love looking at that. Um, other than that, I've got a bunch of books that I do not use. The trusty pocket Wi-Fi, because our Wi-Fi is absolutely terrible here. Um, this is key for the PlayStation and playing online. Not much after that in this room. Um, most of our time is spent out there, just me, Kira and Charlie. That's why we leave Harry to his devices upstairs. So we're, pretty, we're pretty lucky to live here. Uh, we've been here for the past, like, I think it's about six or seven weeks so far. Um, been absolutely loving it, to be honest. Good to just be in, like, the team environment again. What's up? This is the girls' room. This is the palace. That's Caitlin Parker. This guy's upstairs getting her beauty sleep, which she needs. <laughs> Okay, What's up? This is Sky. Sky's 57 kg, going to the Olympics as well. Um, and I'm going to give this to uh, Caitlin and she can give you a tour of the room. Hey, I'm Caitlin Parker. I box for WA. I currently am based in Melbourne. Um, I'm super excited to go to the Olympics. 74 days to go. Uh, and it's going to mean the world to me. I really, really can't wait. It just doesn't feel real yet until I quite get there. But um, oh, I, can show you, I can show you my room. This, oh, look here. This is my um, gown that I got for qualifying. I got my ticket sent home though, so I don't ruin it. But um, this is my little wall, my coach's motto here. Yeah, all right, this is my room anyway. <laughs> Enough of that. All right, we'll go up to Sky's room before she cleans up. No. Sky, we're coming. No. So this is, this is Sky's palace. <laughs> What's your name? Oh, <laughs> I'm Sky Nicholson, uh, featherweight. 57 kilo fighter for Australia. Yeah, really excited to uh, go to my first Olympic Games. Um, it's obviously been a re re extra long wait for us um, with the postponement extra year. Um, so yes, very excited to get over there and get the job done. Officially 10 years since um, Caitlin and I first went away um, representing Australia together. So um, we definitely know each other very well. Um, we've been on teams together for a decade. Um, so I'm very, very grateful that I'm going to Olympics with Katie. Um, she's my favourite roommate ever. Aww, sweet girl. We like snacks. I like snacks. Um, pretty much all we eat is my muscle chef meals for lunch and dinner, like every day, because it's just quick and convenient when we get back from training and we can't be bothered. It's a nice little view, you can partially see the water. You're helping out the Olympic boxing team. What is the coach going to be putting them through tonight? Uh, so the girls and Tony and Sky will be sparring tonight, getting some work in, uh, and the rest will be doing a mix of partner work and pads. How's the team looking? Yeah, good. They're all ticking along nicely, and their weight's where it should be, and they're just sharpening up week by week, getting fitter, and, and intensity in training is lifting, you know, progressively. Now that the six have been uh, named for it, that are going to be representing our country, how do we stack up internationally? Yeah, really good. The, the Asian qualifiers prove that, you know, we beat some of the top seeds unexpectedly and um, I think the team's all in a good position to, to claim the first medal in 33 years. They've all got their own strengths um, and they've all got their own styles and, and they've all seen who they're going to fight as well. The best part about this team is they're quite experienced and, you know, they're, they're all going to give a good account of themselves.
We're seven weeks into camp and we're starting the first week of a 10 week block. How's the team progressed together? Uh, they're doing fine. Yeah, the, the first part of the preparations was just general training. Just getting them into a comfortable routine, getting them comfortable with training three times a day uh, in the facilities where we're using and with the accommodation that we're staying. So, yeah. How have they gelled together as a team? Oh, they're, all, they're always good together. Um, they, they, they've been with each other, a lot of them, most of them, for over a couple of years now, so they're, they're all very comfortable with each other. Third session for the day, Alex, how are you feeling? Yeah, feeling really good, like, camp's been going terrific. Like, I work a full-time job, so for me to have, you know, four months off for the games, it's just tremendous. The team's been together for seven weeks, they're obviously growing. How much better are you going to get over the next ten weeks together, individually and as a team, you think? I think everyone's going to box and, and be as fit as they've ever been. Um, Boxing-wise, everyone's come along sharp. Uh, we're pretty much like physical fitness-wise, right up there. Um, so to have like another 10 weeks is just gonna, it's just gonna blow everyone out of the water. There's not gonna be anyone in the, in the world that's gonna be able to compete with us. Third session for the day, how are you feeling? I'm good, I'm tired, I'm done for the day, I'm ready to go to bed, <laughs> but good anyway. Got a good session in with um, Pads and Sam Brizzy and uh, yeah, moving around in the bag. Good. So you were just doing a bit of bag work and a bit of pad work today or were you working anything specific? Oh uh, yeah, just working on a few things with Sammy, just um, just slowing down and making sure the feet go with the hands because you know that's the most important thing. Sometimes it's really important to actually go back to the basics. It, you know, no matter how advanced you are, I think it's really important to just step back and just remember the small things. Sky, third session for the day, a bit of light sparring, mm -hmm. how are you feeling? Yeah, good. Um, three sessions a day is normal for us, so just a typical Monday. Um, pretty exciting, it's week one of our 10 week program in the lead up to the Olympics now, so um, yeah, special first boxing session for that. Um, but yeah, now I'm feeling good, feeling excited for, for what the next 10 weeks will bring. The team's been together for seven weeks now, how have they gelled? So good, um, we've got such an awesome group all training here together, pushing each other through the sessions and um, definitely really, I guess, getting the best out of each other, it's been good. Now that the six has been named, that's the most that we've had, definitely more than Rio. Why have we got so many good amateurs at the moment? <laughs> I think boxing's just booming in Australia at the moment. I think um, Tokyo is definitely going to see Australia's strongest ever boxing team. So uh, it's definitely very exciting times, 2021 springing. Um, and yeah, I think all six of us have a great chance of um, medal potential. You're finishing up the night's training, how'd they go? Um, the training went well. The, the, the girls have done a few rounds of sparring. There's a group of them now finishing off with the abdominal work in the ring. Uh, Antonio is finishing off with a bit of pad work, with a couple of things that we noticed from sparring. Um, she's working on them now with the coach. And we've got Harry just doing a bit of um, conditioning to finish off with, to part of his coming down. How good is it to be in this gym? It's great, it's a great environment for them. Uh, keeps the, at the moment, uh, keeps the athlete grounded, uh, keeps keeps them in touch with the local community, they, they, they interact with all the uh, athletes in the gym. They, they work great together, this group. Uh, as I say, they've been together for a couple of years now and they've, uh, they've shared successes. They've, they've won numerous medals at tournaments all over the world, so they're a very successful group of athletes and they have been for a number of years. There's no reason why they can't continue being successful. Harry Garside, how important is it to be hanging out with these kids and have them looking up to you? No, I absolutely love it. I've been at this gym now for maybe six months since October last year and absolutely love it. It's such a good culture here and I'm like a massive one on culture. If I didn't enjoy where I was training, I, I wouldn't go there, no way. So I'm grateful back home. I've got pure boxing in Melbourne and then up here I've got the PCYC Gold Coast family. So very grateful. Oh, I think we all just work together. We've uh, our DART principles, so DART represents discipline, accountability, respect, and teamwork. So that's our that's our four four words that we uh, we have on our shirt. And uh, I think it's the thing is we arrive as a fist, not a finger. So um, we all train hard together, and it's good to have like Charlie, Kira, Antonia, uh, people who aren't on the team as well training alongside us, because it really lifts us all up, and um, you know, and it gives us like that extra edge just to make sure we're training hard and, and we're all pushing each other to the limit. So when you're training by yourself, you get it's sometimes gets really hard. Mate, go and rehydrate, get some recovery, get some food <laughs> into you, you've earned it. Thanks mate, good man, appreciate it. As you can see, absolutely amazing event there. The Olympic team looking strong, shotgun. Yeah, absolutely. I've seen like a lot of their um, training clips, they look like they're going hard and, and it's, it's exciting. They're, I saw the other day, they're what, less than 10 weeks out. 
Kama, Alex Winwood, Harry Garside, Paulo Acuso, Justice Heaney, they're looking strong. Sky Nicholson, Caitlin Parker, they're looking strong. This is a great team. Yeah, there's a lot of talent in that team. Um, every time I talk about the Olympic team, because I watched a few of them, but others always talk about Caitlin Parker and that she's the best medal chance. Then there's the obviously Paulo Acuso, Sky Nicholson, Garside, all those fighters, they all... They all stand a chance. If they perform in the night, they can take home some, uh, some medals. So, yeah. I can't wait to see how we go over there in the Olympics. And I think we should all be getting behind them. This is the strongest team that we've had in ages. And they're representing our country. So, well done, guys. We caught up with the Wicked Bodies Boxing Gym in Caval Avenue there in the Gold Coast as they've started a new gym in a venture with Tasman Fighters. And this is our Gym of the Week. <laughs> We're here with Mark, you've opened a gym in the heart of the Gold Coast, Surface Paradise, Caval Avenue, a gorgeous location. Mate, tell us a little bit about Wicked Body's gym. Mate, yeah, it is exciting. It's, um, you know, we've put a lot of uh, thought and effort into this gym. We are right in the centre of Surface. I've had a um, Wicked Body's fitness centre here in uh, Surface for now 16 and a half years. But um, yeah, so we've uh, we've expanded that and opened a you know, nice big um, boxing gym. And, and uh, we've got um, Tasman Fighters on board, so we've got a good home now for the Tasman Fighters to base themselves out of. My brand's something that we're very passionate about. We try and do anything we do with Wicked Bods, we do it uh, 100%. We have a cafe as well, Wicked Bods Refuel Cafe, and now we've got the Wicked Bods Fitness Centre, and now we've got um, you know, Wicked Bods Boxing Gym, uh, the home, home of the Tasman Fighters. You know, when I, my vision was from the start, I didn't just want to open another you know, tin shed boxing gym. Um, it is a bit of a rare location, I suppose, to have a have a boxing gym in the centre of uh, Surface Paradise. You know, in one of the one of the so-called busiest and most expensive streets in the Gold Coast, in Cavill Avenue. Um, I wanted to, to, yeah, not just have a tin shed with a few boxing bags hung up. We've sort of covered a few extra bases along the way. We've got um, Benny Doverson, He's come down and, and branching off in his uh, his physiotherapy stuff um, down here, and we've got um, you know we've got a sauna out the back and, and a cold bath. You know, coming temperature kind of cold bar, so we've got a bit of a little recovery center and a little concussion clinic room coming along as well. So we'll sort of be a bit of a um, you know, one-stop shop. Mate, how important is it to have the concussion scanner in here looking after our athletes in our top tier boxes? Well, it's a first, mate, isn't it? So no one else has had it yet. So I know there's a couple of machines out there, but they haven't been, uh, you know, they haven't been registered or, or the like as what uh, this one has been. Um, it's the top of the line now, and it's, the, it's going to be the first uh, legit, you know, concussion clinic um, in Australia. So it's, it's, yeah, it's awesome. It's amazing. I'm sure we're going to get some uh, some pretty uh, interesting people come through here to test it out. So Stewie Duncan brought the machine over here. I think he was on it about three uh, three years ago from the states, and he got the, the rights in Australia. He knows all the right people. He's been in boxing a long time. We've had the likes of you know already Justice Hooney and and, and Fennick, and I know Jai's had a go of it and. So they're, they're, on, they're, they're going down the right path to get all the right people involved with it. Ruth Hale's the other half, the better half of the company. Um, how important is this passion project and what's it mean to you? Um, I've, just, I've seen the vision come to life over the last couple of months through hard work and blood, sweat and tears. And, and now that it's here, I can, I can see the, the goal, how it's all um, come about. Um, very proud of very proud of what we've both achieved. You've got to have a great culture in the gym and, and that's something that we're um, passionate about and I believe that that's something that we've nailed 100%. Our, um, our culture within our gym is, is second to none and I believe that's one of our strong points. So we've got a branch of Doverston Health here. We're with Oakley. Oakley, what makes this one different to the big branch at Morayfield? So the big branch at Morayfield uh, covers a few more aspects, but the one down here, basically we are covering physiotherapy, exercise physiologists and dietetics. Uh, the difference here is that we'll be on site to liaise with any of the strength and conditioning coaches uh, and the elite athletes for any of their future physio needs. There's an old cliche and it's come from somewhere you can't out train a poor diet. It's just, that's just factual. And unfortunately, with boxing in Australia, I've noticed not a lot of education with what a lot of the boxers are doing. They're not, some, half of them are training like marathon runners and they're trying to be boxers, you know, there's no specifics. You see a lot of them out there busting their ass, you know, twice a day, every day, and their nutrition is just very, very poor. That's why we have our little cafe. Um, now we, we do about a thousand pre-made meals a week. Um, and uh, it just takes the guesswork out, you know, it takes the guesswork out for, 
for, for your everyday person or your athlete, it makes no difference. Fitness and nutrition is obviously, um, without your health and your well-being, there's, there's pretty much not, not, not too much left. Um, so nutrition and well-being and health all goes hand in hand, I guess. That's why we've, we have our three businesses. The nutrition side of things is the area that I, I feel strongly about. I pretty much run the cafe and, and organise the, um, the food and, and the nutrition side of things. We've all also noticed a de direct correlation between mental health and gut health. That's why we believe food is paramount. Bodhi, you're the younger generation coming through for Tasman Fighters. How exciting is this collaboration and project? Yeah, it's awesome. I reckon it's the first gym of its kind with the, like the boxing and the rehab and the concussion and the physio as well. So it's great for boxing in Australia. So big things happening there. Wicked Bodies, Mark and Haley doing great stuff down there. Uh, we've come on board starting out with their, their Wicked Bodies Refuel Cafe meals. They're absolutely amazing. If you get a chance, check them out. So the controversy and fun has kicked off between Hooney and Gallon. The Magic Round of Football was on this weekend where all the games were played in Brisbane. Gallon was obviously here as part of the Channel 9 commentary team. And Hooney just happened to get a seat kind of right behind him at the time. Yeah. He's giving him the thumbs down. Gallon's giving him the finger. There's no love lost between Gallon and anybody he fights. This is going to be a cracking media event and lead up to the fight. I just hope that... Um you know, Justice when he does really well in his boxing career because his acting career is not too good. <laughs> <laughs> good to get some hype behind you, but Shannon. Yeah, absolutely. Like they they do need to um, they do need to put some hype behind Justice. He's he's just a, he's a nice nice well spoken, soft spoken guy that you know they they've got to I guess create some attitude. <laughs> <laughs> Look, I I think he's a great guy. Um, we're big fans of all the good up-and-comers and all the great fighters that are around at the moment. Justice, I think, is a special kid. So I think this is an absolutely great fight. Now, Tim Zhu, speaking of great fights, we had Jack Bowen down there getting rounds with him in Sydney. And now Tim came up to watch you fight and support you and to have a look at some possible sparring partners up here. But everybody's sparring everyone at the moment. This is a great lead-up to both fights, Kama. Yeah, that's what we need. Um, yeah, first of all, thanks to Glenn Jennings and Tim Zhu. They messaged me about two weeks before saying we're coming up to support you. It's great to have them up here. And going to the sparring thing, that, that's why I, I believe that the guys overseas are better because they've always got sparring. Whereas in Australia, it's like, oh, no, I can't spar him, might fight him, can't spar her, might, might fight her. So it's good to see everyone starting to spar each other. Look, we're seeing Gallon sparring Django and Tara Moana. We know that Justice has sparred both of those before. And now Jack Bowen, who I think is another great up-and-coming talent, getting rounds in with Tim Zhu. How would, that would have been just great for Jack. Yeah, that would have been awesome for Jack. They, um, they would have been, I would, I would think, the best sparring he's ever had. So Jack's, Jack's a talent, he's got skills, so it would have been good to watch. A lot of fight nights coming up. June 5th, Marsh Schlieb's uh, fighting for the Australian Bantamweight title against Brad Hall, who was struggling to get an opponent, Schlieb's, and Brad putting his hand up. Obviously, great pedigree that Brad's got, so I think that's going to be a great fight. And a lot of other big fight nights coming up that we're going to be talking about. A quick shout out to the one king, Sam Solomon, who came up and watched the fights as well. It was a great weekend of boxing, great fights, a lot of faces around our sport. There's a lot of hype at the moment. I just want to say a big thank you to all our supporters of Before the Fight. Our views have gone through the roof. So continue liking, continue commenting, sharing and subscribing as we keep pushing this show and representing and sharing the great stories of this great sport and these athletes. I'm Rob Scheif and you're watching Before the Fight.